Welcome to the Monarch Effect. This is the Monarch Butterfly, an icon of North America. The Monarch is known for its magical migration in which five generations of butterflies travel more than 3,000 miles to complete the trek. Right now, there are tens of millions of butterflies gathered in Mexico, having traveled from as far north as Canada. Let's take a closer look. Come with me to Cerro Palón and El Rosario Monarch Butterfly Reserves in central Mexico. It's February and the monarch butterflies have been resting for a few months, recouping over the winter after their long fall migration. Every year they return to this special place and I'm humbled by how hard they've worked to get here. We don't know how new generations of monarchs find their way back each year. It's one of the many mysteries that make the monarchs so unique. Let's get a bit closer to get a better view of the clusters, sometimes called a kaleidoscope, of monarchs and the trees in the distance. To me, they're the perfect symbol or a snapshot of what's happening to our environment holistically. I had to get down here before it's too late. The number of monarchs that return each year has declined rapidly over the last two decades. The butterflies all around us are part of the Eastern monarch population, which has plummeted 84% over 20 years. Let's pause a moment and put that in perspective, as well as getting a closer look at these magnificent creatures. Look around at the butterflies that are surrounding you. Now, let's remove 84% of them. You can feel the difference. While we've seen some rare good years for the monarch, it's not enough when the long-term population trend has shown such a steep decline. The Western population that overwinters in California has declined by a staggering 99%. But what's causing this? Weather variability poses one of the greatest challenges to the delicate monarch. Unusual weather patterns and more severe droughts and storms can be devastating. Combine that with pesticides, deforestation, and habitat loss, and the picture becomes clear. We are responsible. But the first generation of monarch butterflies are ready to make their way north. The monarch's first pit stop is typically central Texas, where they might arrive in early March, greeted by folks like George and Amy Greer. We are the sixth generation of my family to own and operate the Winter's Wall Ranch. George and I both really value wildlife. While we say this is our ranch, it's not really ours. It's really habitat for all of the other critters that live here and use it and move through like the monarchs. Here in Texas, droughts have decreased the availability of milkweed and wildflowers which monarchs need to feed and reproduce so that the next generation of butterflies can continue their migration north. Amy has amazing memories of the monarch on the ranch, including a time she went to a spot on the property that she calls the grotto. It was so cool. All over this tree, there were butterflies, hundreds of them, and up here, it was really incredible. And we had never seen that before, and we haven't ever seen it again. George and Amy and their ranch are part of the solution. They've planted high-quality habitat that will entice monarchs to stay longer, increasing their population, and delaying their journey north until the weather grows warmer. It's always just been a priority to George and I to take care of our little piece of the planet and make this a more hospitable home for all of the different species that live here and use it. Thanks to George and Amy, the next generation of monarchs is now ready to begin their flight, continuing north on the migratory path of their ancestors into the heart of the Midwest. But this landscape doesn't look the same as it once did. What was historically native grasslands was transformed into some of the most productive cropland in the world. By May, the first monarchs will start to arrive in the Midwest, where they'll be searching hard for habitat on a farm like the Ross families. 
being, you know, sixth and seventh generation on these farms. To me, it's in my blood. I grew up wanting to farm and being able to do it on, on family ground, it's a privilege and a responsibility. You're creating something. You gotta do things right and you gotta make sure you're taking care of things for the future. You've been doing some conservation work too. It looks like you got some habitat going. Yeah, we've got uh, terraces and uh, no-till, you know, practices is what we do here on this farm. And, uh, you know, we've got uh, headlands and, and uh, other habitat. We've got a bunch of milkweed here in the ditch that uh, just grows wild. Solutions that are good for monarchs are also good for farmers. Whether that's increasing pollinator habitat, crop diversity, or natural water filtration, it all leads to more resilient farms, healthier soils, cleaner water, and enhanced biodiversity. All right, we got some milkweed here. Yeah, here's last year's. Let's pause a moment and take a closer look at how this monarch habitat will develop when the first wave of monarchs arrives later this year. It's all connected because the extreme and variable weather that threatens monarchs' survival also threatens farmers' livelihoods. For us, it's biodiversity, and we need different grasses and feedstocks and things like that for our operation. And when you're walking the road ditch, finding that milkweed and you know, seeing that process throughout, it's a neat deal. Hopefully, you'll get some monarch this year, too. We'll be seeing them throughout the year, I'm, I'll guarantee it. Our journey to help the mighty monarch may seem daunting but it begins with a single step. Farmers, ranchers, and entire communities are stepping up to give monarchs an edge in their race to survive. By restoring habitat, they're also setting many outcomes in motion that will help people and nature, including countless generations of monarch prosper for years to come. One action can make a world of difference. Each of us can play a role. That's the power of the monarch effect.